surfaces. Then uh, you have this uh, canonical line bundle here, k pi, which is on mg1 bar. And there are basic inequality is this. That's their name. They, they call this as basic inequality. And uh, the result is this one. Looks very mysterious. 4g times g minus 1 times of k pi of this will be big or equal to lemma 1 to the power 12 tensor is That's the their result. They use additive version. In other words, the 4g, g minus 1 times of this one will be 12 times this minus here of the boundary. But actually, this is our case when a equals 1. Sorry, when a equals, uh, when a equals 1. That's a, that actually is a relation for the Weir Peterson and the Takhlajan Zugorov. And Takhlajan Zugorov. Uh, I will not check this one, but let me just. Uh, Mention this. And uh, actually, this also gives you a certain hint about the geometry of the uh, Takhlajan Zugorov. Because of this one, uh, I worked had a result about the holomorphic session of curvature of a weird Peterson metric when n equals 0. But that one can be generalized. You consider holomorphic section of curvature of uh, a weird Peterson. That one should be bounded from uh, above by, uh, I think, uh, For Weir Peterson, bounded from above by pi 2g minus 2 plus n for holomorphic section of coverage. So you can uh, then make a conjecture uh, for the holomorphic section of coverage for uh, Takhtar Zugorov. That will be bounded a minus from above by this one, minus pi to the power uh, n. When uh, and actually, this uh, we don't know how to uh, prove this one because uh, uh, that involves uh, the second uh, variation of the of the of the Eisenstein series, and uh, we don't know how to do that one. So then you have the third group of the fundamental relation. And this is called a show. The first actually was proved by Gang Xiao, then uh, reproved by Konaiba and Harris later on. Use totally different method. So and their result is on MG. But so there are two parts, the result punctures. And the result reads as 8 plus g of 4. And actually, the result is stronger than this one of lambda. I mean, you, I, I take the additive version of this. Will be uh, b equal to the boundary. So. What about for punctures? For punctures, what we have is that on MGN, N is at least 1. You have the following uh, relation. 8 plus G minus 1 plus N, then 2N with lambda. Sorry, lambda is lambda 1. Uh, plus the Takhtar Zugorov. So this one emerged is B equal to the boundary. Actually, there is a remark here. Uh, almost at the same time, and Richard Han, he used this uh, intermediate Jacobian and uh, Morita class. He can prove uh, a result like this when n equals 1. 
So I uh, got to know this one only after uh, uh, Moriwaki actually uh, sent him, uh, told me that uh, uh, Richard Han recently had a work on, on this one for N equals one case. If you, uh, uh, it, of course, he didn't use this language, but if you uh, read carefully, you can get this relation. So this is the uh, algebraic uh, story of this uh, fundamental relations. So you can see, in other words, those lambda i's, lambda m's, and the Weir Peterson and the Takajian uh, Zugraf can be understood in the sense of more globally. This one? Small delta? Ah, this is the eight, sorry, yeah. This is the eight, sorry, yeah. No, they don't have the result for n equals one. They they, they only they, they only have a result for m g. So that's actually for m for for n bigger than one. Actually, there are difficulties. That's why uh, uh, for people like Richard Hand, those people, Morris, and those people, they can they cannot see the the the, the general picture because uh, actually they they ask this question: What happens in general? Because those things are not there. Those things are not. So you, you if you if you really see this one uh, in a uh, more global way, then you can see all these uh, uh, structures are very beautifully uh, there. Ah, that actually, uh, for this one, you need to have this in at least one. You need to have this these things, you know, because that will give you a section. The section, then you use this uh, uh, this Hodge index theorem. To, to, to play the trick. So you have to have this condition. That's why I accepted them. Yeah. So, uh, if we put it as zero, of course, this one, uh, you will not get, uh, you will not get, get their result. Their result is, uh, 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 and, and also it's not correct. It's not, it's not correct. So then I will give you uh, fundamental relations for this analytic side, which essentially is the Masterpiece of the uh, uh, Takraja and the Zugraf. And really, that's the, uh, actually also the starting point for me to uh, try to understand all these problems. So uh, yes, the Kunio already said that you you uh, how to define uh, those Weir Peterson and Takrayan Zugraf. You can first do this one at the level of uh, Tashimoto space, T G N, and you consider uh, this uh, tangent space of this uh, Tashimoto space, and you take two. Uh, tangent vectors mu and nu, and by Cordelia Spencer, you know that one we are correspond to so called uh, one minus minus. We correspond to you can uh, minus one one tensor on the on the universal curve. If you consider it along with the fiber, actually on the fiber of, on, on the modulate uh, on the Riemann surface, then uh, what is the Weir Peterson mu and the nu for the Weir Peterson at the point of m naught? I actually is given by you take the integration on m naught of mu nu bar then. Compete with this hyperbolic metric, so that is the way Peterson. We know by work of uh, essentially due to Angevere, at least for compact case, and this guy is a Taylor metric, and you can uh, do uh, this one even for uh, uh, non-compact case, as what I said. So then uh, here there is a, a big theorem given by Wolpert. 
than myself when you have punctures. So it's the result we just uh, uh, stated over there. So you have this uh, CGN. All these things you have to, ah. Then, because this metric is so-called uh, modular invariant, you can descend this one to the modular space uh, of uh, MGN, uh, then uh, that will give you a kind of form. And what happens is that that kind of form we define as uh, Omega Weir Peterson. Will be just uh, C1 of uh, K pi P1 plus Pn by taking a uh, hyperbolic metric. Of course, you take the dual of this guy. Then you wedge it with itself uh, twice. That one will be uh, pi scale uh, omega real penis. And uh, of course, the work of Takrajan uh, and Zograf, what they did is that once I have this PI, I will have this associated with Eisenstein series, Z of S. And uh, that's what, uh, yeah, I will not recall the definition. And Kunio did that one yesterday already. So then you consider a special value of this guy at two. <laughs> then the eyes, uh, Tak metric on this touch middle space is defined as mu nu tzi on this m naught is defined by m naught of mu nu bar d mu hyperbolic, but the time is you know this uh, Eisenstein series is the modular is the modular you can uh, uh, descend this one to uh, to your new man surface. So you take special value at two, you compute that one. And you know this is a good region and this is a part of function. You know this will actually give you a metric. And uh uh Zograf proved that this actually is a a a Keller metric. When A equals one, they even proved this one is edge break. Then in the paper they asked the the question that whether this guy is edge break. In other words, whether you can find a line bundle with a metric whose C1 will be uh, <coughs> proportional to the Keller form associated to this, uh, to this uh, uh, Keller form, yeah, uh, to this metric. So of course, then you can define this uh, total one. Uh, that will be will be this one, and uh, then this is the part about the. Then of course you will get this uh, omega Takrajan zograph, the Keller form, and uh, the beautiful part of this one is that they can then. Uh, have this so-called the local family index theorem for puncture Riemann surfaces. In order to say something about that, let me recall a little bit of the definition of the determinant. So I have this lambda m here. Now for m uh, positive, then what happens is that I will have a very natural L2 metric. So I want to introduce FQM on this uh, lambda M. So there are two parts. One is the L2 part, which is just a L2 norm on this uh, cohomologies when you assume uh, this. Uh, uh, well, I can, I, can, I, can, I can do this one for lambda M negative. Then I can use this one. 
you have the hyperbolic metric. Everything you just use hyperbolic metric, you put it there. You, have, you get the L2 metric. Then you need to uh, twist the by so-called analytic torsion. And this is a beautiful work started from, of course, from, uh, from, from mathematical physics. Since then, Dock and Pong, they, they found out actually the analytic torsion of Quillen uh, for hyperbolic uh, surface casing when a uh, surface is compact is naturally related to with so-called uh, the special value of sigma zeta function. And uh, what happens is that uh, E minus that M, M naught of M. Of course, when M equals 1, uh, you take the uh, derivative uh, at 0. Okay. So uh, then you get the quillet metric. So that's their definition. Uh, then what happens is that they have this very fundamental theorem. No, I will put it in this way. They actually prove that 12 times C1 of lambda m, which is Q of m, uh, equals uh, 6m squared minus 6m plus 1 of uh, pi square of uh, omega where Peterson minus, what is that, 3 of 4. Uh, omega of the graph is on MGM. So this is uh, uh, the way that, is, of course, they, they try to, to see what should be the second variation of this, uh, of this sub zeta function. Uh, then they find out Einstein series appear very naturally, the special value of 2. So uh, then they get this very beautiful, uh, important result. So finally, let me give you a, a reason why we call uh, these things as a Weir Peterson, Pakatajan Zugraf uh, 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 bundle. So The geometric side. And for this one, you need to do a very hard work for the metric part on the line bundles. I already said that the law of hyperbolic on M0, I call it tau. This is the metric on logarithmic uh, canonical tangent bundle. So, in other words, you have a natural metric on this Km. So then, of course, there is no difficulty for you to get a good metric on Weir Peterson, provided, of course, the links, the links formalism for this uh, canonical, uh, for this uh, uh, the link metric can be applied to those type of uh, singular metrics. In general, uh, let me just uh, I think I will still have. Maybe I can. Hmm. I think I put it somewhere. Oh, okay. So, uh, let me give you a general definition for the L1, L2. Uh, if I have a matrized, so I will get L1 and L2, the two sections. Suppose I have a metric of root 1 and root 2. And how can I get a metric on this one, which is supposed on the base? So the way is like this one. Is uh, let's consider the log version of this one, and the norm of this guy of this section for this uh, the link norm associated with the root one and the root two, 
uh, is defined as follows. Uh, it takes the intersection, uh, takes the integration along with the fiber, then DDC on the total space, log of L1, you take the norm with respect to root 1, then time with log L2 with root 2. Then with certain modifications, actually the you should not call uh, with yeah, is a log of L1. So this guy for root one. This is the function you evaluate at the divider of L2. Multiply uh, 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 additively. And uh, similarly, you do this one for uh, L2. Uh, log of E2 for root two, and then evaluate at the divider of L1. And of course, this, this actually this is symmetric uh, in terms of L1 and L2, so you, you, you will get a, 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 a good metric. So there is a certain kind of integration process in this definition. And imagine if, if, you, if we, the metric root 1 and root 2 become singular. And uh, in general, this integration diverges. So you cannot get a very good, uh, 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 a very good uh, uh, metric on the delimiting pairing. But for our case, we know this metric is a hyperbolic metric. The, the glues for this one is very nice. If you have time, I will, I will, I will write later. So uh, then the integration for this single metric of this type, actually uh, even a uh, little bit more general, uh, we did uh, work with uh, Wing Kiong. Uh, we have this quasi hyperbolic for this. Uh, in other words, near the punctures, the 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 singularity looks like the hyperbolic metric, and those type of metrics, uh, of course, those in integrations converges. Then you can introduce a good metric on the delimiting pair. So that uh, put that simply, what we to have is that we can have this hyperbolic metric on this guy and on that guy. Then I use that uh, formula, I will get a very well natural metric on uh, Weir Peterson. I use underlying to, to say this. By doing this, then you will see a difficult, it's very difficult for you to introduce natural metrics on TZIs. Because then you need a metric on k pi and need a metric on O of pi. This is very difficult, but can be done by using uh, allocative theory. I will, uh, I think maybe, uh, yeah. So I will first state the result. What happens is that you can really have a metric, natural metric, well, in a sense, a natural metric coming from the hyperbolic metric on this k pi and this O pi. So that you do the delimiting pairing, you get the natural metric on these guys, and uh, you can have the tensor product of that. So those are the intersection from the uh, the theory from for for the intersection for singular metrics. Then you want to do this one for uh, homology things, and uh, put that simply, we will have a method. I will explain this one. Uh, 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 a little bit later, uh, after I uh, give you the discussion about this fundamental relations for for this uh, geometric side. So I will just right now I just write down as you will have these things lambda m. You have a very good metric on these things, and how you do this one I will explain this one uh, later. Once you have those metrized line bundles on the modular space. Oh. Oh. Then you can have the following uh, geometric side of fundamental relations.
ये अब डिवाइडेड है सो आई पुट डबल इक्वालिटी दैट मींस आइसोमेट्री And this is actually a sort of a must of all. You take the 12th power of this matchwised uh, lambda m, of course. Let me, I now can assume m is positive. Then there is a canonical isometric to. up to a multiple constant e of h depends only on the, on the genus. So uh, I should not call this one, maybe mfr1, I, how, how many do I have? fr3, I up to fr3, so I can call this one as four, five, and six which says that C1 of this matchwised line bundle will be just the pi square of omega Weir Peterson. That's the reason why we call this line bundle as Weir Peterson line bundle, because if you put a natural metric there, it's C1, just the pi square of this uh, uh, Weir Peterson teleform. And uh, there are two of them. And C1 of weird Taklanian graph of this guy will be 3 over 4 omega Pz. This is the reason why we call this as Taklanian graph uh, line bundle because it's a matrized version. You take the first term form, just uh, uh, gives you this uh, kind of form for the Taklanian graph metric. metric. So uh, I still have, uh, I will not take a break, so I, okay, I, but I will not talk about uh, <laughs> another one hour. So I will now explain uh, how you uh, uh, introduce this uh, determinant metric and how you overcome this difficulty and uh, to get a, a, a well natural metric on the canonical line one and also on the punctures. And actually, the key starts from the work of uh, of uh, joint work with uh, Wing Kyung for this quasi hyperbolic matrix. So, uh, of course, those two are compatible, and uh, from this one you can easily get this. But uh, this is not fair because in this uh, business, I have to use sort of this uh, equality for lambda equals 1 to define the determinant metric, to define a good metric on this guy, on this guy. Okay, so, uh, so how you can solve this difficulty? Talk about those tactic points. So you, you, you first start with the Riemann-Roch theorem. You take a lying bundle, uh, take its one of the Grudenik determinant. And uh, you know there is a canonical isomorphism to air with air tensor with K pi minus one of the delimiting pairing. Then K pi with K pi. Then tensor with the of sing boundary, you call the singular part. So this is the algebraic uh, uh, 
Lima-Rock theorem, pr first proved by actually, uh, the cycle version was proved by, uh, uh, well, Mumford or, or Grudendieck uh, as application of Grudendieck's uh, Lima-Rock theorem, proved by Mumford. Then uh, it's, but this is much stronger because that one gives you, this is a line bundle in terms of cohomology, this is the line bundle in terms of uh, intersection. So you get the uh, relation of two line bundles which are the same. So if the metric is smooth, if the metric is smooth, then I said that already, if you have metric on, the, on your relative for your vibration, right, for your morphism, and then you will have a natural metric on this k pi. And if you have a natural metric on this row, and then you have the natural metric on the right hand side. And this guy, metrized, you don't care. Because when we consider metrized version, we don't consider uh, things at the boundary. That's, that's very difficult. We don't know how to deal with, even now. On the other hand, once you have this metric row on uh, air, you have the quiller metric row and uh, tau. I call metric tau on, on this uh, relative tangent bundle, which is a k pi dual. So then you have, then if you put there, then you, could, you will get a, a I, I use the bar to indicate that you, this is the metrized version. And you have this natural isometry, then up to E to the AG. Okay, this AG actually can be written down uh, uh, very precisely. This, is, this for smooth metrics actually is proved by uh, Quillen in, in this uh, setting. Of course, it uh, comes from a previous result of, uh, of uh, uh, sorry, proved by Deling, comes from previous, previous result of, of Quillen. And uh, also independent of the things has another approach. But anyway, so uh, you, 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 you have this one, you have this one. So now, this is for smooth case. But what happened if the metric becomes singular? I already said that if the metric becomes singular, you have to be very careful. Only for certain type of, of singularity, you can get the convergence, even for the intersection. So we will choose uh, this one with so, I, I uh, so-called the, the with hyperbolic uh, 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 type of singularity along with the punctures. So once you have that one, then at least you can do for, for this part. So then how you introduce a determinant metric? So the way is like this one. I know for each of the, for each of the line bundle, if I choose section, I can write this one as a summation of R A I of uh, R I uh, of P I. Let, uh, P, P is not good. Uh, let me say R I. One, two, ma, just, uh, let's just consider a single Riemann surface, okay? So then in order to give a metric on this air, so we can consider a metric on this Ri, right? If I can, so in other words, if I have, if I give a metric on this section, then uh, somehow I can get a metric on air, even though I don't know what, what is that metric, uh, and how that metric be behaves, but anyway, I can get a metric. So for this one, I will start with, let me just uh, uh, choose a good case for hyperbolic metric. Once I have hyperbolic metric, I already said that I have this d mu hyperbolic. Its volume will be 2g minus 2 plus n, right? So I will take the omega hyperbolic which is normalized, 2g minus 2. Maybe, I, do I have pi here? Uh, maybe, I think I, I will have. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I, I use, because I use a particular, this uh, y square of dx wedge with dy. I think I have pi here. But anyway, so I would, I would, the, the point is that I would take a scale of this uh, volume form, then I make this one to be 1. Okay, so this is, is, is the point. So I have the omega hyperbolic uh, normalized volume form. With respect to this one, 
I can introduce so-called, well, actually, this is the work with, with Winkle. And we can introduce so-called associated uh, Green's function, even for that uh, quasi-type uh, 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 thing. So I can introduce a Green's function. So I just give you the 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 position. That's Winkle and myself. So uh, you can find one and only one uh, type of things because I think this is uh, in a sense, even though it's very detailed, but that's 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 good. Omega Green's function. Omega means omega hyperbolic in general. It's for the quasi hyperbolic uh, rings. Uh, satisfy the following uh, properties on M naught, crosses M naught by uh, deleting the diagonal. Satisfy the following condition. Uh, first one is, uh, uh, of course, if P M is fixed, I get a one defining section, one of P. Then I uh, then I can choose this uh, uh, locally holomorphic defining function for for this uh, point P. Then this G omega of P Q. Uh, if you for any Q, uh, not P but the near P. Uh, that will be uh, locally behavior like this one, minus log of f uh, p of q square plus uh, alpha q. Here, alpha is smooth. Uh, f p is the holomorphic defining function for this uh, point p, for this point p. And uh, so locally, you have this one. And if you consider dq and dqc, of this Green's function, g omega of pq. And this, of course, is very important. That will be omega q. Omega is the associated normalized volume form. A minus of delta of q. This is the Dirac uh, symbol of this one. And uh, thirdly, uh, if you take integration of g omega of pq, then omega of q compete with this uh, normal as a volume form. This has to be zero. That, and of course, this has to be symmetric. G omega of PQ equals uh, G omega of QP. And uh, actually, there are more. Five, this one has to be smooth. Uh, this is smooth on this guy by deleting the diagonal. Finally, you still need to control its glues. You can find near PIs. Those are the punctures, the singularities for, for your metric, for your metric. And you can find a disk on this, then on this, of course, the center will be PI on this punctured disk, and this guy, uh, uh, you choose any Q, and uh, you can find a constant C positive, such that you have the glue's condition for this G omega, Q of Z. This one will be less equal to C, uh, maximum one, and log of minus log Z of this groups. And uh, you can show that you can find one and only one uh, of uh, 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 omega Green's function satisfy this one. Omega is a given, given, uh, yeah, it's the, the, the quasi-hyperbolic metric. You have the associated volume form. Then you normalize it one so that the, the omega will be becomes one. It means the, the, uh, 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 so the, the singular metric with at most the hyperbolic, uh, yeah, the uh, near the puncture, near the puncture. So 
uh, has to be very careful because of the, uh, 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 of the divergence. Once you have this one, then what happens is that then you can introduce a good metric on such type of things by using, uh, 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 by using a Green's function. Let me call this as P. Okay. So what is that metric? I call that metric as uh, mm, uh, omega allocative metric on on this line bundle. And this very precisely defined it. And uh, rho of AR of omega for this point P. So I, 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 I now just write as a rho P, okay? So rho P just for this formula. So what is the definition? Log of this one, if you work at Q, that will be uh, G omega of PQ, this Green's function, plus beta omega of P. So what is this one? And uh, in order to understand this one, in any case, I need, I need this one, so I will explain for the smallest part the far instance approach. He, how he introduced uh, a good uh, cohomology theory. So you have this, uh, when g equals zero, you have this uh, Fubini student metric. You normalize this one so that uh, that will be like uh, 2 pi root 1 to uh, 1 plus z square and a square, then dz wedge with dz bar. So this is the Fubini Studi, uh, normalized volume form. And uh, when g is at least 1, uh, you have this uh, holomorphic differentials, m of km, and you have a natural pairing for phi psi maps to uh, phi which is a psi bar. And you take the orthonormal basis. This will be phi i. And the omega canonical is defined to be the 2g1 of, wait a minute, uh, root minus 1. Phi i which is phi i bar. So you, then you, 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 you very easy because it's also normal basis integration. This will be normalized. And this one, in, for, for the G equals zero case, we take this one as this the volume is one. So we take this as the omega canonical. So for each of the M, we have this omega canonical a metric on Km. On Km. So once I have this omega, this one is also normalized. Then I solve this equation. Uh, what is this? Uh, uh, DDC beta omega. So normalized by so this uh, is unique up to uh, constant. So I normalize that one. I will find, uh, of course, a, a small lemma is that you can find an only one uh, beta omega satisfy this one. So this beta is defined over there. So the key point is that for each of the P, I will have this uh, metric here. So then if I write in this way, I will have a metric on some uh, tensor metric on, on this air. The good thing about this metric is that if you take a DDC of this metric air with this row, and uh, 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 this one then will be uh, what? Will be the degree L time with omega. Hmm. So in other words, what I need is that So this 
So now I introduce a definition called a thermismal metric. A thermismal metric. This metric is uh, uh, rho on air if omega atomism metric. If the C1 of air rho will be the degree, sorry, will be the degree of air time with this omega. This is the condition. In other words, C1 will be multiple of this omega. And then uh, the second one is that this rho should be a good metric in terms of, uh, of Mumford. So then you, with those two conditions, you can prove the following small lemma. Uh, if you have a rule one and a rule two, are two admissible, omega admissible. So the singularity for, for this omegas are, are very important. Actually, this uh, is also a work due to Wing Kim Two and myself. So then this rule two can be written as rule one times e to the power c. C is a constant. So up to constant, you will get, you will get this. You will get this. Particularly, for example, we, we know the also know the existence because of this construction. If you write the L as this one, then you always, by using this definition, you, you can get a one at the mismo match from this L. So then you want to do this intersection. So what happens is that for canonical things, for this part, you, you will have a, a, a very nice uh, 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 Serial here. I want to compare the omega things with a canonical th with, with this set with the canonical setting. So, sorry. Let's see. So, I will write air at this one. U M. Uh, let me. Okay, so I also wa want to have a canonical omega transmissible on this canonical line bundle. So this is done by this called a tall allocator for omega. It's defined as follows with the tall of AR of omega at this point P is defined as HP, you take its square, then the limit of Q goes to P, and uh, ZP minus ZQ. Those are the local coordinates near P, divided by E of minus of G omega of PQ. Then normalized with E minus 2Q of 2G of beta omega P. And G is a genus. Sorry, it's a, so it's, this is Green's function. I use Q as a genus. And you can you can show that this guy is a good metric on this canonical line bundle, also omega admissible, also omega admissible. So uh, also omega admissible. So I already said that the admissible metric, two of them only difference by a constant C. So now what, what, I, what I claim is that, I claim this. Oh. Yes. No. I, will, I don't claim, I give you a definition. So if I have a line bundle air with the metric, which is an omega admissible, I will give you a definition of a rule of canonical, omega canonical metric as follows. I already said that I first write this one as O of summation of AI of RI. Then I will have, instead of this omega, I used omega canonical. I can get a omega canonical allocative metric on this guys, on this guys. Then, so I, I get this uh, uh, low omega 
what is that? Allocate of omega canonical metric. So similarly, I can do a thing for rho AR of omega on this guy. Then this is one omega admissible metric. But that metric will be uh, different from this original row. So original row will be this one time with E of C for some C. Once I have that C there, I use this expression to get this row allocated for omega canonical. So this metric is row of allocated of, of omega canonical tends with E to the power C. This metric is no longer omega admissible, but omega canonical admissible. Actually, this is a smooth metric. I only need this constant C here. Need this constant C here. The reason is because once you, 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 you time this metric with a constant, you know uh, what happens for the intersecting theory. So similarly, I can do this one for this uh, uh, canonical metric, <laughs> omega allocated metric on this canonical line model. So in other words, if I have uh, this uh, uh, tau metric, which is omega uh, uh, canonical, then uh, it's omega admissible. Then I can have this uh, tau of AR of omega time with EB. Then I define this tau of uh, omega of, can of canonical as tau of AR of omega canonical for the smooth one time with E to the power B here. So then what is HQ of uh, air? of rho with respect to uh, this uh, tau. And this is by definition, H, what I call the determinant. Now what I have, I have this, all these things are for the omega canonical things. Those are smooth metrics. I have the quillum metric for the smooth metrics. So I have this rho of omega canonical and tau uh, omega canonical. This is in the category of, 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 uh, of, uh, of smooth metrics. So quillum metric formula can be uh, used. And we just defined this determinant metric by using the smooth things. And what happens, of course, then, is that you just see once for this omega the metrics, matrix, if you're defining this way, then uh, how the constant multiples uh, 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 behavior. Of course, this, this is from the intersection side is very clear. And the definition for that one, then you, you, you will get the Riemann-Roch theorem. You will get the Riemann-Roch theorem in general for this one, even for singular metrics, if you define in, 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 in this way. In this way. Of course, for this definition, there is a, a point you have to uh, uh, be very careful. In other words, a line model written in terms of if, uh, those dividers, th this expression is not unique. Is not unique. You might have some bj of, of rj prime. Then you need to show that by using another expression, what you get, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this, this constant c, actually does not depend on the, on, on, on the expression. This is so-called the, 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 the mean value lemma in, 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 my, in my work. So in any case, now what happens is that you do have such kinds of uh, 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 Riemann-Roch theorem by using this, this one, by using this as a determinant metric. So we cannot use the, 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 the equivalent things, but uh, somehow we, 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 we use uh, the established Riemann-Roch theorem for smooth metric to get a determinant metric for the uh, uh, singular one, you know, so that we can have this isometry. We can have this isometry. But still, we have not it solved the problem for uh, this k pi, km, and uh, uh, O of pi. What should the metrics on this guy? We said that we have certain metrics on on this, uh, on this uh, uh, tau of hyperbolic, omega hyperbolic, uh, uh, allocate of tau of allocate of. And uh, that one, you know, to, which is the metric on, 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 on this guy, which is a singular metric on this guy. So how you really get a metric on, on, on KM, I have to use this lambda 1 equals uh, 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 lambda of k pi, this thing. And uh, so in other words, I, in order to get a metric on this one, I need to fix a, a uh, get a natural defined metric. I need to fix a constant because 
two difference by a constant. I need to fix that constant. How I fi fix that constant? I use this thing to fix that constant to make this uh, HQ. Q1 will be the H of the determinant of this, of this place. Then that constant can be determined uniquely. Similarly, I need to have, for each of this guy, I have this, uh, of this uh, omega R of Kelf metric. Once I have this omega R of Kelf metric, then I need to, in order to get the natural metric on this guy, I need to uh, uh, also fix the, the constant CIs. So in other words, for this one, I will get a constant, and for, for those PIs, I will get constant. Then we call this constant as, as, as AI, as A, this as C1 to CN. Okay, those constants. So I said that for A, you just use this one because then you, you have a very different way, uh, de uh, define uh, uh, well, because this is, is because this side is is is, is, is fixed, so that uh, the difference that this a can be can be read. Uh, uh, then for those CIs, how you read this one? And there are two uh, parts. You 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 do the uh, two conditions. The first condition is that you already know p1 plus plus pn. So you know there is a hyperbolic metric here. So in order to and this, of course, is omega admissible. So then I have already have this metric is omega admissible. And then for each of the uh, omega hyperbolic allocative metric on this OMPI, also omega admissible. So then I, I time with some constant so that KM low bar and OPI low bar, in other words, is the constant multiple with this EA and the ECI. Uh, from from those allocated uh, one, that will be this metric, hyperbolic metric will be K M tends with P one plus P N. So I do the decomposition, and then of course this one can determine A and a summation of C I's, but not each of C I's. Then there is another principle which I call the black hole uh, democracy which means those CIs are the same. You don't really care. You don't really care about which, C, which, uh, which punctures you use. You just assume all of them are the same. Then you can determine the, uh, uh, by, those, by this isometry. Because uh, A is already determined, then N of C uh, uh, is determined by this, by, 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 by this isometry, by this isometry. In this way, you do get a very natural uh, 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 metric uh, by using our curve theory on this uh, KM and the PIs, which are uh, omega hyperbolic uh, admissible, admissible, so that you can uh, then uh, have the story I told you for this geometric side. Yeah, I think I stop here. Sorry. Yeah.